first of all, I just want to say, Gary and I just want to say thank you so much for volunteering at Night to Shine. This event cannot happen without you. And we know that we could <clears throat> never run this event with just the staff that we have here. We have over 400 people volunteering for this event alone. It is great, isn't it? So <clears throat> the other part of this that's great is not everybody who is volunteering is from Calvary Chapel. It has spread out past the four walls of our church into our community. And so we're excited to have those of you who don't attend Calvary Chapel to be a part of us for the evening to, um, to really just serve our special needs community. And so we're very, very excited about that. So um, we could not do this without you. And we're very, very thankful. I'll give you some specifics as we go through. But um, I just want to tell you a couple things about Night to Shine. So how many of you do not know what Night to Shine is? Okay, great. That's a good start. But I'm going to tell you what Tim Tebow says Night to Shine is, okay, so that we're all on the same page. So this is according to the Tim Tebow Foundation, um, their website. It says, Night to Shine is an unforgettable prom night experience centered on God's love for people with special needs. Night to Shine is held every year the Friday before Valentine's Day and is becoming a worldwide movement that is changing Valentine's Day from simply a celebration of love to a celebration of God's love for people with special needs and the value of life. So every night, uh, every guest of Night to Shine enters this complimentary event on a red carpet, complete with a warm welcome from a friendly crowd and paparazzi. And the paparazzi, they kind of get the party started. They are making things exciting. So that it's, a neat, it's a neat place to serve. So once inside, guests receive the royal treatment, including hair and makeup stations, limo rides, corsages, boutonnieres, karaoke room, a catered dinner, a respite room for caregivers and, and the parents, and of course, dancing. And the highlight of the night is when each guest is crowned the king or the queen of the prom. And it's really just a, it's a spectacular event. Everything is com complimentary. And this year, instead of doing hair and makeup on site, we have different salons who have volunteered their salon and their um, cosmetologist to do hair and makeup in their salons. And so the girls are making their appointments around the South Jersey area. And um, so we have a couple of salons who are doing haircuts for the guys and just really making it, it neat. So when they come, they're dressed and they're ready to go. And so um, we hope that helps with some of the chaos here on campus, but it's also, it makes it more special for them that they get to go and, you know, be pampered in a salon. Who doesn't like to go to the salon, ladies, right? Yeah. So um, that's what, that's Night to Shine. So this year's Night to Shine, I hope you all have it in your calendar marked off, is February the 7th. Are we all good? All right, February the 7th. So this is Tim Tebow's, the Tim Tebow Foundation. This is their sixth anniversary of doing Night to Shine. And this is Calvary Chapel, Gloucester County's third anniversary for doing Night to Shine. Last year, um, there were 655 churches from around the world who hosted a Night to Shine event. This year, uh, it's 720 and counting. They are still taking churches in. So um, pretty spectacular. Last year, over 100,000 guests came through Night to Shine with over 200,000 volunteers. So you figure... Here, we have 185 guests coming this year, which means we have to have, at the very minimum, 185 volunteers, one buddy for every guest. And then in addition to that, we have our limo drivers, we have our table servers and our table hosts, we have parking lot attendants, we have nurses and EMTs, the Washington Township Police Department come and they escort with, with their sirens going, our limos, we have paparazzi, we have um, guest registration, buddy registration, what else am I missing? Who, what have I not said that you're doing? Sensory, we have a sensory room, we have a karaoke room, we have a quiet room, I mean, 
pictures, right. We have photographers. We have picture framers. I mean, you name it. We have over 400 people volunteering. In addition to that, we have people setting up, people tearing down. We have so much happening behind the scenes right now. You, you would walk into the office and your head would spin, honestly. There's so much night to shine going on. And it's exciting. Like, there is so much enthusiasm being built. So I hope that you are excited to be a part of this really great event. So I'm going to show you this video from this these are the this is the highlight video from last year's night to shine from Tim Tebow Was it cool meeting Tim? Oh yeah, Tim inspires me so much. Dude, we're going to have some fun tonight, right? Oh yeah. All right, let's go. Every heartland farm town fence post sun. Every west coast big break queen. All your high-rise skyline concrete kids, every zip code in between. Grab your first time from porch pounding heart and gas up your Chevrolet. Cause the sun's half gone and it won't be long till we make our getaway. Soy alegría y corazón, soy maestro de fe y amor. Enseñamos a creer y enseñamos a soñar. Hoy es tiempo de reír también, hoy es tiempo de bailar Deseamos hoy creer y por eso déjanos volar This is our time, our night to shine Oh, take my hand, hold on tight Don't look back to the morning light Let the world go, praise be slow Your favorite pair of denim, patched up knees and faded blue. Told two twenties in your pocket. Me siento como un rey. Yo soñé con este día. Send it out across the world. This is our. One of the best night of my life. Oh, mm, thank you so much. Thank you. It's so much. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. So that's that's what we do, you know. That's what we're just a little piece of that. But I want to tell you that we at Calvary Chapel, those who who come to our church, know this. But we love our special needs community. 
we don't just do night to shine. This is a one night of the year event, but this is an outreach event so that we can let the community know that Calvary Chapel's here. We love our friends with special needs and we want to serve and minister to them on a regular basis. So we have a couple of ministries besides the fact that, you know, our children, are, we have children with special needs. We try to mainstream them as much as possible. We offer buddies, we offer help wherever we can do that. But as our friends get a little older, the, the distance between mainstreaming kind of is a little bit more noticeable. And so we've provided opportunities to, to teach them and minister to them on a per, more personal level. So we have every other Friday, we do our Friends for Life, which is a, a youth group for adults with special needs. Primarily, they come in, they have, we serve them dinner, they play games, they sing songs, they get a Bible lesson, and then they break up into small groups and they talk about that Bible lesson and how they can take it and apply it to their lives and their situation, whatever that may be. Andy, is there any more I need to add to that? Yep. Yeah. All right. So how cool is that? Yep. So Friends for Life is for those adults who are 22 and older, and they just have a blast. It's like Night to Shine every other Friday in Friends for Life, and so they just have a great time. Um, if you find that you are incredibly blessed by serving at Night to Shine this year, you might want to consider um, volunteering at Friends for Life. The other way that we serve our community with special needs is that we, um, every Sunday, have a Bible class um, at the 930 service for those who are 16 years and older. And um, our special needs friends come into the sanctuary. They worship with us. They sing with us. They um, serve in whatever capacity they're comfortable serving, and it's a good fit for everyone. So a lot of our 930 service ushers are from our GPS class. They take our offering, they are greeters, they're saying hi. One of our special needs friends, Rob, if we don't take offering at the exact minute, he makes sure that we know not to forget the offering. He is Bob's best friend, just saying. So, um, so Rob is our, is our make sure we take the offering kind of guy. Um, we allow our special needs friends to serve on the worship teams. Um, where else do we have them serving? I think that's pretty much pretty. I think that's pretty much where they kind of feel comfortable serving. I know Alethea wants to be a preschool teacher in the future, and that would be a great fit for our special needs friends to to serve in the in the children's department as well. So, um, if there's a place and we can make it happen, we try our best to make those things happen so we can minister to our special needs community, our friends. But in addition to that, we don't want to neglect their caregivers and their parents. Um, and so we minister to them as well. We, we believe that Jesus said that we are to love God and love people. And he never qualified people, you know. He didn't say love those you want to love. And he didn't say love those who have the same skin color you did. He said love people without qualification. And we believe that's across the board. It doesn't, it, it's color, race, nationality, ethnicity, um, height, like t tall or short, um, doesn't matter, ability, whatever. We want to love everybody, right? And so we believe that's what Jesus has told us to do. So that's a little bit about what we do here. And so here's what I want to encourage you. As we go into the Night to Shine event, this is an outreach event. So we are ministering to a wide population of people. Some of our friends have never been in church before never been in the walls of a church. We are coming out of a culture, out of a time period where our special needs community has been ostracized from the church. And the, the culture is changing and people, is, people are changing. And that is not what we find all the time anymore. There, we are starting to see churches with open arms. They're willing to be comfortable being uncomfortable, and they're embracing our special needs community. But that's what we're coming out of, okay? And so um, many of our friends have never been in church before, and we're going to a dance. So our friends, they may not act and dance 
the way that you think that they should, okay? I just want to put that out there. And even our friends who have been in church their whole lives may not behave or dance the way you think that they should. So please don't put your your boundaries around our friends. I love this community because their boundaries don't look like my boundaries. And I think that sometimes we need to have a little bit more of them and us. So let me give you an example. Alethea swims. Our daughter is 16. She has Down syndrome. And she would be mortified if I said that. She, she does not believe she has Down syndrome. And so she looks at a special needs person and she goes, are you okay today? I'm like, Alethea, talk to them like they're a person, right? But anyway, th- that's just Alethea, right? So she swims for the Pittman High School um, swim team. And she comes in last every race. But let me tell you, that girl gets in a pool, she'll dive in, she'll swim as hard as she can, and she, her heart matches none other. And she gets out of the pool, her very first swim meet, she gets in the car, and she says to me, I am such a great swimmer, right? Now, you and I would go, I came in last every single race. I I should just quit, not Alethea. And that's what I mean. We need a little bit of their heart, right? To see life in a different way. So I'm encouraging you when you are at night to shine, if you see something and you're like uncomfortable with it, it's okay. Be uncomfortable with it. It's all right, right? And and I tell you about Alethea because she lives with us and we know her well, but there have been dances or weddings we've gone to and I've had to say to her, hey, get off the floor. We don't dance like that. And so you just may see things that you're not used to. And that's okay. It's really okay. All right. So don't put your expectations around our guests. We are to love that night. We are the hands and feet of Jesus, and that's what we want to do. Okay. So what can you expect then from our guest? Well, let's see. Your guests, our guests, our friends, they may not think like you do, and they may not process like you do, and they may um, not understand as quickly as you think that they should, and you just may need to say something to them in 12 different ways before the 13th time when they actually understand what you're trying to say to them, okay? So be patient, be understanding, all right? Some of our guests will love to dance, and they'll want to dance all night. You won't be able to get them on the, off the dance floor. Some of our guests will want to eat all night. You won't be able to get them out of the dining room, and that's okay, too. Some of our guests will love to eat and dance, and you'll be, like, going back and forth, okay? Some of our guests won't like the noise and the chaos, and some of our guests will thrive on all the noise and all the chaos. Sounds like some of us, right? Are you starting to hear that our guests are just like us? They have desire to be loved. They have a desire to be valued. Each of our friends have a purpose and a plan that God has created specifically for them. And that's really what I want you to understand as you come into Night to Shine. Some of our guests, um, each of our guests, let me say it this way, each of our guests has a voice you may be, have to be creative in discovering their voice because some of our guests are nonverbal, but they still have a voice. And so that might be a challenge for you, but I encourage you to have fun figuring out what they're trying to say. It can be really, it just think of it as this is a challenge and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure it out tonight, okay? So not all of our guests are nonverbal, but some of them are. But I can tell you that all of our guests will desire to have a good time, whatever that looks like to them. Some of our guests, the night is all about the karaoke room, and you won't be able to get them out of the karaoke room. What's that, Marge? Yeah, so, and that's okay. But I want to encourage you that Night to Shine is about our friends. It's about our guests. It's not, I'm going to say this as nicely as I can, okay? So receive what I'm saying as I'm trying to say this nice, but Night to Shine is about our guests. It's not about you, okay? So when um, I first met Gary, he hired me to work at Camp Halawasa, and he used to say all the time to the staff, camp is for the campers. Well, Night to Shine is for our guest, okay? So let me say it this way. If your guest wants to go to karaoke and you don't, guess where you're going? Yeah. 
if you're serving with your spouse, which I think is the greatest thing in the world that you can serve with your spouse, and your spouse is a buddy and you're a buddy and you want to hang out with your spouse that night, doesn't that sound like a great date night? You know, dinner and dancing, right? But if your guest doesn't want to hang out with your spouse's guest, then you got to come up with a different date night, okay? You hear me? You hear my heart on that? Okay. So um, just remember that Night to Shine is about our guests. And, I, and I, I make light of it, but we have so many people who say, but I signed up to do this with my, with my husband or with my wife. That's great that you did that, but remember, okay? The other thing I need to encourage you is that with 400 volunteers, we have done our best to place you where you ask to be placed but we can't always accommodate that. And so we, we had to move some of you to places where we needed you. So I'm just asking you to have this beautiful servant's heart and you're okay with that and that you'll come with a great heart attitude. You'll come wanting to love and to serve and do whatever is needed from you at night to shine that night. Are we all good with that too? Yeah, anyone not okay with that? If you're not, see Gary, okay? <laughs> and he won't care, so that's how it goes. <laughs> Um, all right, so we're loving God, we're loving others, night to shine. All right, specifics. Now we're going to get into how the night's going to work, and then we're going to break up, okay? Um, so we're not going to break up, you know what I mean. We're going to get into smaller groups, okay? So 185 guests. This is how the night's going to kind of run. When you guys come, you are going to register as a volunteer in our new building, in our new youth facility. That's the plan. Okay? Yeah. Woohoo! Yeah. So the plan is that's where you're going to register. Okay? We'll kind of walk around. You'll get to see where that is. It's, the, it's building 9 and 10. There aren't any numbers on that door, so I'm going to say something that sounds really stupid, but you'll laugh when you come that night because you'll go, where did she say? It's next to building 8. Building 8 has a number on the door, 9 and 10. We might not be there in the construction process yet, okay? So it's next to building 8, all right? You guys good with that? All right, so that's where you're going to register. Everybody. Buddy whatever. That's table host, parking lot. You're all going to register in that building. Our guests will arrive approximately at 5 p.m. is when they're going to start arriving, and they're going to register in the Summit building. The Summit is our children's building, for those who, of you who don't come to Calvary Chapel, and it's, direct, it's located directly behind Starbucks, so that's where they're going to register. So our buddies, after you register, you're going to head down there and wait for your guests to arrive, okay? From there... The, our guests and our buddies will get into a limo. They'll be escorted by police with the sirens going and the lights going around the parking lot. And they'll be dropped off here at the front entrance at the red carpet. And you'll come in through the red carpet. Para paparazzi will be standing there cheering and going crazy and all excited. And I know I have a small group who's going to be paparazzi. And they'll be the loudest ones there, I know, for sure. But... Your job as paparazzi is to outdo their cheering, okay? So um, that's where they will be. And the guests will come in, and then they'll come basically into this room. The sanctuary will be our dining room, okay? All the chairs will be out. All these chairs, the comfortable chairs will be out. Tables and chairs for dining purposes will be placed in here. And this is, we'll have some entertainment going on. But this is where our guests and our buddies will be eating that evening. So where are they dancing? In the new fellowship hall. Woohoo! Yahoo, right? Only it's not done yet. So <laughs> if you are a person of prayer... Please be praying for our evening, and I'll get into that, but we need that area to be done because that's, if not, we're going to be dancing in the parking lot or on the tables, and, you know, that's just another whole issue. So, um... Anyway, that's kind of the flow for the evening. We'll have our we'll have our karaoke room and our quiet room and our sensory sensory room. Those will be in this back hallway here, the nursery, the prayer room, and the flop office, just like always. And then we'll also have a, a couple of step and repeat opportunities so that 
um, we'll get into that as you get into each of your smaller areas of training. But we added a couple so it's not backed up when they first come in the in the off the red carpet. You know, last year they came in off the red carpet, they got their corsages and their boutonnieres and we took pictures and it took forever. So this year we're switching that up a little bit, but you'll get more of that training, okay? You guys good with that? The event begins technically at 6 p.m. and it ends at 9 p.m. But we're asking you as volunteers to arrive no later than four o'clock and your smaller training will tell you specifically what time you need to be here, okay? And um, your smaller training will also tell you your attire for the evening. I can tell you, buddies, you are dressing semi-formal to formal, okay? So I know that without a doubt, but parking lot, you are not dressing semi-formal to formal because it is no fun parking cars in Stiletto Hills, right? Yeah. So um, anyway, so your smaller training will tell you specifically what you should be wearing that evening, okay? Um, parking, when you come, if you can... Um, carpool, that would be ideal, okay? Um, but when you come and you park, we want you to park on that end of the property by um, Simcox Pond, you know, our new our retention pond with the beautiful white fence, down on that end, behind Denny's, behind the old Taco Bell, behind the old Wendy's, in those parking lots, that's where we would like for you to park as much as possible, okay? That way when our guests come in, they have kind of the prime parking Make sense? Okay. Um, and if you can eat before you arrive and your bellies are satisfied, that would be great. We will have food for volunteers, but we're just asking you to um, kind of satisfy yourself, stomach, your food-wise before you come. Never leave your guest unattended at the night to shine. Um, and that's specifically for buddies. Um, we have a very small picture of each of our guests. And so we don't know the big picture, right? And so I'm just asking that you would be mindful of the fact that we should never leave our guests unattended for any reason. If they have to use the restroom, I'm asking you to go up from, to leave the table, leave the dance floor and walk them to the restroom. You do not have to go into the restroom and help them. We have restroom attendants for those who need that. We have nursing staff for those who need extra help. But don't leave the doorway of the bathroom. And I'll just give you an example. Your guest may be a runner. They just, not like a runner like the cross country, but they just may take off. And you've sent them to the bathroom thinking they're going to come right back, and they don't. And we're liable and responsible, okay? So just, that's one idea. So one example. So just don't ever leave your guest unattended, and that will go a long way. The other thing is if we will have nursing staff and EMTs here, on the property, if you need any kind of help, any kind of medical help whatsoever, don't leave your guests to go get them. We'll have floaters, we'll have table hosts, we'll have people around send somebody to go get help and they'll come in and they will help. And we're not to administer any medication. That's across the board, okay? Again, we're liable, and so we just don't administer any medication. That's up to the caregivers and the parents, okay? You guys with me on those? All right, and um, relationship building. Our guests love to build relationships. They do. They just they think they think you guys are out of this world because you have volunteered your night to spend an entire evening with them, and to them, night to shine doesn't end at 9 p.m. What they start at that night, they want to take you home with them because you're their friend and you played with them all night and they just love you. And so um, you're going to want to give your phone number away and you're going to think that's really cool. I'm encouraging you not to, okay? I'm encouraging you to talk to their parents or their caregivers and figure out the best way to do that. So my first year at Night to Shine, I met this young man, and he is the best, honestly. He, he, I gave him my number because I didn't know better, and he texts me um, from time to time, every holiday, actually. Boxing Day, happy Boxing Day, Val, you know, and then he'll text me, he texted me on his birthday, and, 
you know, those kinds of things. And he's very appropriate, and it's okay. It worked in my favor. It was fine, but that's not always the case. And then I have another young man who I met last year, and he has asked to call me, and I, I said to him, I just can't. I'm not comfortable with that, but if we can leave it to Facebook Messenger, that's perfect, right? And so from time to time, he still says, hey, can you, can you call me? No, I can't. I'm sorry. But we can talk here, and I can encourage you here, you know. So just be mindful of that. Talk to their parents beforehand or their caregivers. Uh, Afterwards, it's fine. Um, And figure out the best best way to do that. Our Capernaum friends will tell you that our guests, again, no boundaries, right? They don't think like we do, and so they may call you all day long. Robin, would you agree with that? Yeah, and so that's what we're just trying to, you know, they're not going to have the same boundaries we we do, right? Like I had to teach Alethea, you don't text anybody after 9 o'clock at night, and you don't text anybody before 9 o'clock in the morning, because she was like, oh, I'm up, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, we're in the bathroom, I'm going to text whoever, right? And so they just don't understand, okay? You guys with me on that? All right, cool. Um, any Any questions? All right, so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to show you Night to Shine Calvary Chapel style, and then we're going to break up into small groups, okay? It may not be prom season just yet, but that's not stopping a special event in Gloucester County. The Night to Shine prom is underway for those with special needs. And our Cleve Bryan joins us now with more on this event that means so much to so many. Cleve? Yuki, it's an unbelievable event. It's one that I will seldom get really dressed up for, but tonight, no doubt. And the guests are arriving now. You see the ROTC letting the special guests out of their limousines and and special rides that they come here to for a red carpet event. Uh, This is an event that happens uh, each year. Oh, our special guest is making his appearance around the side. He is ready for his night to shine. There are about 160 guests attending this particular event. It's something that's happening worldwide. And we got to meet up with a few people as they were getting ready today. The tables are set and the red carpet is out. Thank you. After months of preparations, Calvary Chapel, Gloucester County is ready for the big night. What are your plans tonight? The prom. And what are you going to do at the prom? Dad. Whether in your 60s like Lily or your 20s like Liam, A night to shine is a chance for people of all ages and abilities to strut their stuff and get dolled up for the night of their life. Dancing, having fun, you know, dancing with a girl, you know, slow dance or something like that. Liam's got the idea. The annual Night to Shine initiative is sponsored by the Tim Tebow Foundation. More than 100,000 special kings and queens experience a first-rate prom at one of about 650 events happening at the same night throughout 20 countries. It's absolutely incredible, you know, and it just... You know, it it brings the world together. We get to see her smile and laugh. And the event is totally free for guests. The entertainment, food, makeup, dresses and tuxedos are all donated by local partners who come alongside the Tim Tebow Foundation. Wendy Graziano, who owns Chadmore Formal Wear, says donors end up getting way more than they give. It's very emotional. It's like, it's absolutely wonderful. I mean, they, these kids come in here and they come out and they look in the mirror and they just are like a million bucks. It's, and their parents are so grateful. So it's a, it's a great thing. Oh, are you going to be the prettiest girl at the I prom? Know. And so we are live as the guests are making their way into the Night to Shine event. Look at this beautiful couple we have right now, big smiles. Everybody looks amazing as they are coming into the event. They're getting the royal treatment, and quite frankly, they deserve it because they are the kings and queens tonight. We're live in Washington Town. So, Cleve Bryan, CBS 3 Eyewitness News. And we're applauding here as yes. well. A Night to Shine, indeed. You could hear it in Wendy's voice. It was absolutely beautiful. Absolutely so beautiful. Thank you, Cleve. Appreciate it. They're going to be dancing, slow dancing, he said. Party like it's 2099. Yes. Do it. Party like it's 2099. That's funny. All right. So, um, any questions? Awesome. So, once again, Gary and I thank you so much for volunteering. We appreciate it. And again, we couldn't do this without you.